community gives you the chance to apply what you learn. So yes, input is important. Yeah, studying, consuming content, consuming information, but you have to apply. And the community offers you that safe space. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful way of thinking of it. When we feed ourselves ourselves different perspectives, we enriching uh, our own knowledge, we're broadening our perspective on the world, we're understanding other people better, we're um, seeing the world differently, right? All right, so I'm joined today in the Global Studio once again by the one, the only, Casse. Hey, Thiago. Hey, guys. All right, guys. So today we are talking all about community and why being part of a community can help you become a better learner and also a better person. But before we get started, if you are watching us here on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel because every week we put out cool podcasts like this to help you go from feeling like a lost, insecure English learner to becoming a confident, natural English speaker. Plus, we have recently reached 500,000 subscribers here on the channel. It's incredible. And our next goal is 1 million subscribers. So help us get there by subscribing if you're not subscribed yet and share this channel, this amazing channel with your friends and family, okay? So help us get to 1 million so that we can help even more people learn English well, okay? So guys, uh, let's get started here. And can say, I guess it's, it's good to define community first. What do we mean by community? Well, a community is generally a group of people who share the same space. So this could be physically or virtually. And they sort of come together for a common goal or common purpose. Either they live together or they come together, you know, to share ideas, experiences or, you know, resources of some kind. So a community would be a group of people coming together with sort of a common interest or a common goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great definition. Uh, do you have any examples, by the way, to give? Sure. Uh, a community could be a group of friends who, hmm. you know, enjoy the same things and they come together to, you know, enjoy activities together like sport or, you know, movies or just other things they have in common. It could be that you're, you all love dancing or you all are English learners and you come together to to talk about that or to relate to one another on that topic or mm -hmm. because of the interest that you share. By the way, I love the way you said dancing. Can you say that again? Dancing. Dancing. Wow. Is that correct? <laughs> How, I mean, my pronunciation, dancing. Is that it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, dancing. It's a, it's a different way of saying dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for laughing. Yes, it is. <laughs> I didn't realize it was different. <laughs> Yeah, dancing. I don't know if, it, if it's... Dancing, yeah, dancing, yeah. dancing. I don't know if dancing. it's more in the lines of British English, yeah, the way you're saying yeah. it, right? Dancing. But, yeah, yeah I, I mean, uh, I had to point that out because when you said that, it was like, oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. So another example I can give here is a school network. So if you study at a school or if you take any kind of course, the people you study with, the people that go to the same school that you go to... Uh, that could be considered a community as well. That actually reminds me of my days back when I was teaching English in language schools here in Brazil. And um, there was this uh, school that I worked at and uh, we started doing these live events with students. Basically, we would gather everybody, all the students from all levels, all classrooms, you know, and uh, we would do something cultural together, you know. And uh, there was this one time I did a Beatles night there with the students and it was really fun. We, you know, I played and sang Beatles songs together. And then I told them a little bit of, about the history of the band, how they were formed and, uh, you know, what happened to them after that. So, yeah, I mean, uh, that was a, a great example. As a matter of fact, I do have a, a short footage of that day. So, Chago, if you could briefly play for us, that'd be cool. Yeah, just to show you guys say how it went, yeah. It was really cool. Check it out. Oh. We'll shake it up, baby, now. Shake it up, baby. Twist the shout. Twist the shout. Come on, come on, come on, come on now, baby, now. Come on, baby. 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 That was cool. Yeah, that was a, a great night. And I think that was the first time we did something like that. 
Mm. And uh, the school started doing these events more and more. And uh, nowadays, I think they're still doing it with other teachers. You know, it kind of caught on. But yeah, that was a great example of a school network community that you can have there. Yeah. Yeah. And what I love most about it is that, like, yes, they're all English learners, mm -hmm. but the purpose is greater than that. And that's the point we're making today, right? Like, they're, they're not sitting there with their notebooks and pens, like, you know, writing down the, your, the instructions you're giving them. They're literally, like, enjoying. They're in the moment repeating and they're singing along. I love that. It's, it's creative and it's fun. Yeah, it's definitely a way of living your English. Yeah, you just... Uh... Just live it. Yeah, just enjoy it. Another example of community we can give here is meetup events. So maybe language exchange programs, you know, maybe you go to another country to study there for a while and then you meet other students or other people there. That could be part of a community. That could be an example of community. Uh, even the events that uh, Real Life English used to do back in the day, many years ago, uh, Real Life English used to host or hold these uh personal in-person events where you know teachers learners they would get together at a bar for example and just enjoy uh, being together practicing their English maybe having a few drinks yeah so yeah. that's another example that comes to mind yeah what else would you give here Cassie I would say that definitely social media like anything mm. online Like, we're all doing it in one way or another. Like, we have our WhatsApp groups, we have our Facebook, Telegram, different groups, you know, that we use to connect with people. And um, in my case, I've used quite a few language exchange apps to um, help me with Portuguese, but uh, also other languages. And I think this is a great way of, like, connecting with someone and, you know, sharing a part of yourself and then also, you know, receiving knowledge or a different uh, perspective or different, there's, there's deeper layers to, you know, language exchange. So I think with uh, language exchange groups, that's an, also a nice example, but social media in general, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, you know, you're commenting, you're watching a video. I recently started following a, a, a random <laughs> account because this woman posts like really fun videos And I'm learning, like reading the comments, I feel like I'm learning something about her culture. So um, the point is that when we join these, when we follow people on social media, when we join groups or communities uh, like that, we are also, you know, connecting with people who share a similar interest or ideas or worldviews or things like that. So definitely I'd say social media and online communities are, are also mm -hmm. a great example of that. Cool. You did say something cool there. You said deeper layers. Yeah, social media has deeper layers, I guess you said. Uh, what does that mean when something has deep layers or deeper layers? So when we talk about something having deeper layers, I mean that there's more to it than meets the eye. Like what you see might look like it's, you know, it's one thing, but there's a lot more mm. the deeper you go into it. Like there's, there's more to it than, than we think, than we initially think, or than we initially can imagine right mm -hmm. so That's yeah cool. like a cake you know many <laughs> layers <laughs> uh, i can also think about gaming right cassie i mean uh, nowadays there are so many gaming communities and eh? uh, people who love video games they play online together that's a great example that actually reminds me of humbert because humbert uh, one of our team members he has recently sent us a really cool video message sharing his experience with how being a part of a community helped him live his English. And mm. just to be clear here, uh, what, what do we mean by living your English? We mean making English part of your day-to-day -day routine, okay? You consume stuff in English daily, yeah? Not because you have to learn it or study it, but because you enjoy it. And it's just something that is always there. It's part of your life, okay? And you do it every day. So um, I thought it would be cool for us to actually watch uh, the clip where Humbert shares his experience. And Chago, could you please roll it and let's see. Okay, so for me, community was really important in several aspects of my life, but uh, certain, certainly the most important one, I think, is that uh, you as a creative, me as a creative, uh, if you're a creative person, you need to feed yourself with different perspectives. Like, um, the more perspectives you know, the more experiences 
that you can hear from people that come from very different places in the world will benefit you and will nurture your way of seeing things, the way you feel things, the way you create your own ideas, the way you create your own uh, position and point of view about things. So that definitely for me was one of the biggest things when it comes to community. Mm, I, I absolutely love what he's saying because I love the point he's making about how community helps you develop basically broaden your perspective on the world because he uses, he says it really beautifully. He says, feed yourself different perspectives. So what do we do when we feed, when we, we're feeding? We literally have to take something. It's an action, taking something and putting it into your body. Now think of that with like someone else's perspective. You're going, okay, I hear what you're saying. Oh, I read this book. I like what he's saying. I'm watching a TED talk. I like what this, so I'm taking that and I'm putting it in to my taking it into myself and it's beautiful it's a beautiful way of thinking of it when we feed ourselves ourselves different perspectives we enriching uh, our own knowledge we're broadening our perspective on the world we're understanding other people better we're um, seeing the world differently right so I think that's really absolutely true and he also used a nice word there he said nur he said nurture yeah. What does it mean to nurture? You nurture something. Yeah, so to nurture means to care for or develop, encourage the growth or development of something or someone. So we can nurture our children by, you know, making sure that they go to school, that they're fed and cared for. Um, we can nurture our minds as well, our, our, our thoughts by, you know, feeding ourselves the right uh, things or exposing our, ourselves to to people and things that are good for us, that make us feel good and that help us develop in life. Yeah. Thank you so much, Humbert, for sending your message and sharing your experience with us. That was amazing. Uh, just a quick reminder here uh, for you in case you are watching us here on YouTube or listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any other place, we highly recommend you download the Real Life English app, okay? Why? Because you can listen to our podcast, to this podcast right now, uh, with an interactive uh, transcript, you know? So it's really cool. Yeah, if you want to follow along what we are saying, yeah, make sure you download it. It's free. I'm going to leave the link in the description here if you're watching us on YouTube, or just go to your favorite app store, all right? Google Play Store or Apple App Store and search for Real Life English, all right? Now, moving on, Kase, um, we also got a couple of nice messages from mm. some of our students, uh, Marco and Elena. They sent us some, uh, yeah, they sent us an audio message also sharing their experience with community and why it is important to them. So we're starting with Marco's message here. Let's listen to what he has to say about that topic. Hi, guys. I think that there are many ways in which um, community has helped me on uh, improving English. I think, first of all, it's because, I mean, at the end of the day, like English, it's just language. So the, the usefulness of a language is like to communicate. So I think that it would be like useful, useless or uh, in vain if you learn a language without using to communicate with other people. So that's a really useful having a community on which you can uh, practice and improve your usage of the language. Biggest uh, help from uh, at community level was uh, like from the real life fluency circle. I've been a uh, year since uh, July 2018 and it's uh, really great because I can practice English uh, on a day to day life. I mean, nowadays I'm living in Australia, but even when I was, for instance, in Italy, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to practice English on a daily basis without uh, this community. Aside from that, I also participate on um, other kind of meetings. When Whenever I travel, I use uh, an app called Meetup, which is really useful. It's really widespread. You can find in almost every country and you can meet uh, people from different kind of events. I go to stuff like uh, lang language exchange, uh, and uh, all sport activities like playing football, go for a hike, uh, 
or um, co-running, so it also helped me on uh, practice my English and uh, connect with uh, like-minded people. So, Cassie, one thing that stood out to me about Marco's message was the part when he says that community gives you the chance to practice your English every day. And that's true. Yeah, if you are part of a group, you can always, you know, send the messages, maybe uh, jump on a call with the people there and practice your English every day about whatever topic you're interested in. What about you? What caught your attention the most about his message? I think what I like most about his message is when he talks about, you know, having the opportunity to connect with like-minded people. I think it's really... I guess it makes us very anxious or nervous when we think about like going into a community space, especially online or being part of a group where you're sort of an outsider or, you know, people think one think about things in one way and maybe you have a different view. So you feel like an outsider. But usually if you, you know, connect with the right people, if you're in the right groups, you're going to feel like Marco. You're going to be able to connect with like-minded people, which means connecting with people who share the same views, who share the same ideas, and maybe not even exactly identical views or ideas. I think maybe who just think about things in a similar way. So it's not that you, you have the same thoughts or you're ideas are identical or the same, but they're similar. Uh, something else that community helps you with is activating your English. By activating your, your English, we mean studying English in a more deliberate way. Yeah, so yes, it's good to leave your English to consume content in English, but also it's important for you to be more intentional or deliberate sometimes mm -hmm. with your practice. So let's say, for example, that you have been studying a specific set of vocabulary, maybe some phrasal verbs with take. You know, uh, you can go to your community, to your group, and deliberately you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to try to use a couple of these phrasal verbs that I'm learning when I talk to people there today. Yeah, when I exchange messages with them today. So this is a more deliberate way of using community mm -hmm. to activate your English, to study in a more um, intentional way. And about that, we have the second audio message from another student, Elena, and she also shares something really cool here. Let's listen to it. Hello. To be honest, I've never thought that a community might be very helpful in that case. But as turned out, I was wrong and it has been proved in practice. I've tried to start learn English many times and I uh, wouldn't say that it uh, wasn't um, successful, um, but I uh, didn't notice a huge achievement and huge difference. But when I joined to Real Life Fluency Circle, um, I noticed that uh, my English uh, skills improved uh, by lips and bones. And it's true. I think uh, the main reason that uh, we are, as English learners, uh, we always try to learn um, different grammar. We try to listen to, um, for example, podcasts. We try to read something. We take uh, classes with English teachers. And everything is uh, like Im input. Everything we try to put in our head is great, but also we had apply every knowledge which we learned and uh, participation in any kind of community. It's a wonderful chance to do it. Okay, so one thing she says that I really liked was input is important, right? But community gives you the chance to apply what you learn. She said that, right? Community gives you the chance to apply what you learn. So yes, input is important. Yeah, studying, consuming content, consuming information, but you have to apply. And the community offers you that safe space, right? Where you can go in there and practice, apply everything you've been studying and learning. Um, she also used a really cool expression, Cassie. She said, by leaps and bounds. What does that mean? So if... We use this phrase, leaps and bounds, we use it to emphasize that something or someone is improving or increasing quickly. So in this case, with her English, 
she was able to improve her English quite quickly once she joined the community. So that's what it means. Yeah, great expression, great idiom there. Great job, Elena. Anything else you would like to add here, Cassie? Yeah, the part that I was really drawn to in Elena's message was when she mentions that community is not only beneficial when you're learning a language, but also in other areas of life. She mentions, you know, starting a family and raising children. And I can relate to that myself. So I know that when I was pregnant, I felt lost and <laughs> I felt like, oh, you know, no one around me is pregnant. No one's there to give me advice. My mom had kids 30 years ago, so like, she can't really help me. And um, I think online communities really helped me during that time. And I think for a lot of people, I mean, it could be a health issue. It could be, you know, like raising kids. Some of us are living far away from our parents. We don't know what to do. Um, it could be other things in your life that you want to, um, you know, hear from other people, hear what other people have to say. So when we when we think about this and we think about like feedback, right? So you might be, you know, asking a question in a group or um, asking for advice. And there are people there that will generally help you out. So when we think about language learning and we think about being in a group of, I don't know, gamers, mm -hmm. um, you could ask your question in, in English and usually, most likely, people will help you out, whether that is like, you know, giving you a little tip on uh, maybe your, your, what you're asking your question, or they'll give you some advice um, if you're making mistakes. So you could ask them because you're usually all in the same boat, right? You're usually all there for the same purpose. All right. So now we have actually a really cool clip that I got from a TED Talk from Seth Golden. And the talk is called The Tribes We Lead. And uh, he is known for talking about the importance of creating your tribe or building your tribe. And it's really cool. Uh, one of the things he talks about in this talk is how um, one of the best ways for you to sell your products nowadays or services or your ideas is by creating a community, by, you know, uh, leading a tribe. Yeah. And... Uh, he actually um, gives some nice examples of questions for us to reflect when doing that. So, uh, Chao, could you please play the clip for us and let's watch it now. This one minute clip from the TED Talk. Michelle Kaufman has pioneered new ways of thinking about environmental architecture. She doesn't do it by quietly building one house at a time. She does it by telling a story to people who want to hear it by connecting a tribe of people who are desperate to be connected to each other, by leading a movement and making change, and around and around and around it goes. So three questions I'd offer you. The first one is, who exactly are you upsetting? Because if you're not upsetting anyone, you're not changing the status quo. The second question is, who are you connecting? Because for a lot of people, that's what they're in it for, the connections that are being made one to the other. And the third one is, who are you leading? Because focusing on that part of it, not the mechanics of what you're building, but the who and the leading part is where change comes. Yeah, that was cool. Any thoughts, Cassie? Yeah, I think that when we think about like the power of community, when we think about how much further ideas or, I mean, of course, in business, that's an obvious thought that one would have. The more people you have um, talking about your brand or about what you're doing, obviously, the further and the bigger your business is going to expand. But I think about like concepts. I mean, we, we live in a world where like everything moves fast. And I think it's the same when we think about like um, tribes and communities. If you're if you're together, you're so much stronger when you're <laughs> when you're united, you know. And he used some nice vocab here, like pioneer, for example, when someone is a pioneer or to pioneer something. What's that? Mm hmm. So if you're a pioneer, you're among the first to do something. So if you're a pioneer in the food industry, maybe you created or developed something unique that hasn't been invented yet uh, in that particular industry. So yeah, a pioneer would be among the first to invent or do mm -hmm. something. The first question he asks is really cool. Who are you upsetting? Yeah, you should ask mm -hmm. yourself that. Who are you upsetting? Uh, what does that mean to upset? Mm -hmm. 
So if you upset someone, you're causing them to worry or be unhappy. Um, and if I connect that with your previous question about pioneering, I think when you're pioneering, you're breaking those boundaries, right? Because you're no one has done this before. So you're bound to upset someone. You're bound to disrupt the current way that things are done or the way that people think about things. And we can connect that with something else he says, which is cha changing the status quo. Yeah, so the status quo is uh, the way things are, you know, the way people think that things work and, you know, oh, it's always been like that, so let's keep doing it like that. Like, you don't question the things that you do every day, yeah? So what he's proposing here is for you to change or to challenge the status quo. Like, okay, we do it like, we do it this way, but why? Isn't there a better way to do it? This is changing or challenging the status quo. And when you do that, you upset people, some people. It's inevitable. True. Right? Some Absolutely. people will not be open to this change, let's say. Speaking of challenging the status quo, yeah, you know, uh, I think we could bust some myths here about English learning also, because <laughs> some beliefs that people have or some uh, things that people say sometimes, yeah, you got to live abroad to learn English. Well, that's not true because, you know, I am living proof of that, guys. You know, I've never been abroad and I speak English, you know, so that's not true. Second point that I hear all the time, you got to spend a lot of money to learn English. That's not true either. I mean, there's so many cool resources nowadays for free that you can actually use to learn the language. I mean, you don't have to. And you got to know people who speak English in order for you to, you know, become a, an English speaker. Not necessarily. Yeah, because, you know, again, going back to the resources that we are talking about because of technology, let's take the app, for example, the Real Life English app, which is really cool because, first of all, the app is free, you know, It's free to download. You can download it. You can try it out already and see, uh, try some of the features there. And with our app, you can also speak English with people from all over the world. At the touch of a button, you can connect with someone there and have a four to eight minute conversation with that person. So, you know, uh, these beliefs, you know, they don't really apply anymore nowadays because we have so many cool resources like the app. Speaking of the app, we have a cool shout out here from one of our app users. All right, so this shout out goes to Muhammad, who says, I absolutely love the Real Life English app. As someone who's been learning English as a second language for a while, I've tried a lot of different apps and methods, but this one stands out. The live speaking feature on the Real Life English app is simply amazing. It's a fantastic way to practice speaking with other learners and native speakers of English from around the world. Overall, I would highly recommend the Real Life English app to anyone looking to improve their English skills. It's a comprehensive, effective, and enjoyable way to learn, and the community aspect makes it feel like a true, collaborative, and supportive experience. Oh, yeah. Amazing, Mohammed. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Mohammed, for the amazing shout out. And if you want us to shout you out next time, uh, make sure you leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or you can just write us an email at hello at reallifeglobal.com. All right. Can't say we also have a great YouTube comment here to read from one of our viewers here on YouTube. Could you read that one? Yeah, this comment is from Roger Sabino, who says, I have been learning a lot from you guys. I'm from Brazil, and in the next week, I'm going to start a new position in my job because I had a job interview in English. And guess what? I did it. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys, for sharing all your knowledge. Wow, amazing. Congratulations, Roger. That's fantastic. Really, Congratulations, really. Congratulations, well man. Uh, good luck. Best of luck at your new job. Yeah. And thank you for leaving us a comment here on YouTube. All right, Kasey. So now on to the last segment, talking about connecting your English. Now, what comes to your mind when you think of connecting your English? So when I think about connecting my English, I think about my why. You know, the principal reason that I started studying or that, you know, sort of drives me to 
perform all the different actions. Why, you know, it's the thing that makes me want to join that group uh, on on Telegram or on you know language exchange app. I, I want to be part of something, but there's a why, there's a reason, and I think that's what I I think is is quite essential, right? You know, understanding that motivation, understanding what it is that fuels you to keep learning and to keep pushing and to keep going. If you think about it and if you keep, you know, that in mind, if you keep that at sort of the core of like your your day and your actions and your plans, then I think it makes it easier. It makes it easier to feel co- courageous in those moments, you know, when you're you're wondering, should I, you know, speak to the stranger? Should I join that group? And something else that comes to mind when we talk about connecting your English is connecting it to your identity, to who you are today, and also to who you envision yourself in the future. Uh, part of that is connecting your English to your interests. So whatever your interests are, the topics, the media that you like to consume, you do those things in English. And Uh, when I think about that, that actually reminded me of Xenia, because you know, Xenia is another team member here at Real Life English, and um, we have the Fluency Circle group, which is our group of students, where you know they have a lot of cool activities there, you know, and quizzes, and they share stuff together. And uh, now Xenia actually has sent us a short video message talking a little bit about how the Fluency Circle community helps people, the members there, connect their English to something bigger than themselves. I think, Asa, you touched on that earlier in the episode, yeah, about connecting your English to something bigger. Uh, it's mm-hmm. not just about the English language itself. So let's see what Xena has to say about that. Are you familiar with the idea of an imaginary friend? The one who's always there for you when you need them? Or the idle one to hang out with all the time? Now... Imagine that this friend is not an imaginary, but a real one. And it's not only one friend, but hundreds of English-speaking friends from around the world in one place. This is our Real Life English Fluency Circle group, where people gather together, not only for learning English, they're there for something bigger. But English becomes the integral part of their daily lives that connects them all together in one global community. People there learn and have fun together, encourage and support each other. They grow Mm -hmm. together and they also build the world beyond borders. Nice. You've had some nice experiences with the Fluency Circle, right, Cassie? Yeah, but before I talk about that, I want to say that Ksenia did such a beautiful job, like with the storytelling there. You know, mm-hmm. she painted a beautiful picture where we were like, oh, <laughs> intriguing. Right? Where's this going? <laughs> this imaginary friend. Yeah. Um, it's a good copyright. Yeah. <laughs> it is <laughs> excellent. Um, yeah, I, I, I have had the privilege of um, having live lessons with the Fluency Circle and. I think it's there's something really magical and special about this diverse group of people from around the world, Japan, Korea, uh, Germany, like India, like it's it, Brazil, it's it's amazing. Peru. I was I'm always amazed and even like uh, you know, some African countries as well. Like it's always literally as she said building their building this world beyond borders, but what I would say is that What makes it special is that, you know, we're not having a, a regular class where there's a teacher and I'm, I'm there to uh, tell, teach them something that they didn't know before. It's more like this group of people literally coming together to, I feel like they're building each other up. They're saying that like, there's not only, it's not only about English, as Ksenia said, it's like a support group, like saying, I, I, I'm, I get you, I'm with you. Um, I've been through what you've what you're going through and I'm going to help you. I'm going to motivate you. So you have students motivating students, learners motivating learners. And some of them, a lot of them are teachers in this group, which is amazing actually. (laughs) So they're, they're literally inspiring each other and motivating each other. And through this sort of storytelling and, and sharing of experiences, I think there's this, um, 
unity, like mm. solidarity. Like uh, I, I understand you and I've been there and this is what I did and, and this might help you as well. So you don't feel alone because mm -hmm. I think that's the one thing that uh, can feel quite scary, you know, when you're learning a language and you give up so easily because oh, I, I don't know, you know, I don't have mm -hmm. anyone who <laughs> who's going through this with me. So there's that. And I think it's, it's, it's just wonderful. It's really, yeah. really inspiring. Yeah, well said. I can't top that now. Now I have to wrap up the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was really cool. Uh, but dear listeners, today we gave you some examples about different kinds of community, you know, uh, and how community can help you, again, be a better English learner, but not just that, but also a better person. But now we want to mm. ask you, what is your experience about being part of a community? I mean, uh, are you part of a community? And how does it help you be a better learner or a better person? We are curious to hear your story and your experience. So write to us sharing your experience about being part of a community. You can send us an email at hello at reallifeglobal.com. Or if you are watching us here on YouTube, you can just simply leave us a comment down below. All right. So that's it for today, guys. Stay tuned for next week's episode. And thank you so much for listening, for watching, and I'll see you soon. All right. So one, two, three. Oh. <laughs> we are talking about how the generative AI technologies like ChatGPT, DALI being AI, you might have heard some of these different names thrown around lately because they're taking the world by storm. And so in today's podcast, we wanted to talk all about whether you can use these tools to improve your English if they're good for language learning. And if you're an English teacher, is it something that you should be worried about it? Are you going to you know, lose your job to artificial intelligence? And we're going to you know, answer those questions more. We're going to even talk about whether a Terminator type situation is something that could be probable and exercises that you can use to improve your English with artificial intelligence and so much more. So let's get right to it.